Welcome. You are watching Line Screw One. Well, hello, tubers. Hope you're doing well wherever you are in this crazy YouTube universe. Miserable day here where I'm at in Western Canada. Wet, cold, rainy, but <laughs> by the end of the week, we should be up to low 80s. We're finally transitioning into summer. Thank goodness. But hey, I didn't come here to talk about the weather. I'm talking about the winning instead. Can you believe what is going on with the Bud Light debacle? We are winning. <laughs> the momentum is increasing. Has a snowball fallen down a hill? <laughs> it's just building. And I just assumed that Bud Light thought that the consumer, particularly us conservatives, were idiots. We were stupid and forgetful. And, you know, when the news cycle would continue we would just forget all about this well it's not happening not happening and you know we've all seen what's been happening to us conservatives around the world since trump lost the last election well yeah well it feels good for payback especially over a brand that uh typically was for the working man and uh just a beverage that didn't need to be politicized and brought into the culture war and they're getting their due and we're winning <laughs> can we feel smug about it yes we can for a change <laughs> and of course the latest news about the uh, the VP what Alicia Alicia yeah apparently she's on a uh, <laughs> leave of absence or something <laughs> that's code word for saying hey we can't fire her because the woke lefties will flip out so they're just kind of brushing her aside. She's been replaced by somebody else. And I guess she will quietly go her own way because I, I really can't see a future for her anywhere in the Anheuser-Busch family of beers. But one thing I think I should point out, and I think a lot of people have forgotten this because, you know, I watch a lot of different vlogs regarding this issue. It's not so much that their sales are down, but the sales of the companies that are not involved in this, they are doing fabulous. Now, of course, it's a trailing uh, uh, indicator where it's going to take a while before the next quarterly report and the sales are tabulated, and that's where we're going to really see the numbers get hit. But in the interim, if you look at the share price of competitor Molson Coors, <laughs> take a look at the graph. There's been some people that are really smart. Kind of do like what I do when I'm an investor. I look for uh, alternatives that uh, deserve to be rewarded. And it looks like millions of you, maybe retail investors and even institutional investors, have jumped on the Molson Coors bandwagon and their share price is up. And they are being rewarded for keeping their nose out of this, as they should. <laughs> So, just wanted to point that out. But I can't wait for the Anheuser-Busch share prices to really get hammered after their Q2 numbers come out. So, we're probably looking at summertime before we actually get to see those numbers. And there's just no way they're going to be able to justify what's going on. No, no, no. But, as I said in the previous video, they're kind of in a catch-22. Damned if they do, damned if they don't. Anheuser-Busch can't really apologize no they can't they don't have the balls <laughs> literally and figuratively <laughs> but sure would be nice if they did but they're afraid of the lefties themselves they try to pander to the lefties and to this uh, culture war agenda but at the same time they fear them that's probably why they try to pander to them yeah boy they never thought the moderates and the conservatives would continue the boycott and even expand it we all know that there are many other brands that uh, Anheuser-Busch are involved with, and they're all getting hit with some boycott action, as they should. But the main focus should always be Bud Light. <laughs> it should be. You know, hammer that one. You know, focus hard on avoiding ever selling that crap. Now, I've been asking some of the proprietors in the private liquor stores here in British Columbia what their sales are like. And, you know, some of these smaller little villages where there's only a couple hundred people, they never really did sell much Bud Light because the people around here just 
don't like it because there's too many other alternatives. But in the larger cities, yep, it's definitely having an effect even here in Canada. Because, you know, we have the typical uh, left-wing, right-wing divide, as you'd see, say, in a place like Oregon, you know, where the cities are liberal and the, the countryside is conservative. It's kind of a similar effect here in British Columbia, where the cities are all liberal and woke. You get outside of there, and the people there are definitely conservative, with conservative values. And they understand this issue. They don't want... Bud Light to go woke. They don't want to support brands that do this, that get involved in the culture war and bring you into it. They don't want to cram this stuff down people's throats because people are tired of it. And it's not about uh, being disrespectful to that community, the LBGTQ plus community. No, no. Nobody needs to torment these people. They can live in peace like, like everybody else. But having a specific agenda forced down your throat all the time in advertising, especially with such an iconic working class brand. It's ridiculous. On its face, we get it. It's funny how some of the liberals don't. Some of their little comments <laughs> on social media where they think we're going away. No, we're not going away anywhere. No, the boycott will continue the uploads on YouTube for thousands and thousands of people on many platforms were hammering that brand down and uh, teaching them a lesson. As all consumers have that right. If you don't like the agenda of any company that you do business with, you can walk across the street and do business with somebody else. Because there's always alternatives in almost every industry. Especially in the beer industry. And I would even go so far as to say, even, even for those of you watching who are in the United Kingdom, there are publicly traded breweries on the, the FTSE, the FTSE. You know what? <laughs> Why not invest in some of them? Why not buy their products? Why not support them? Avoid Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> just why would you go there? It doesn't make any sense. It's not like their beer was ever fabulous in the first place. So I got some questions for you guys because it's always interesting when these phenomena happen. What do you think is sustaining this boycott? And do you think it's gonna keep sustaining and growing? Because I believe it could. Because all I can do is my part, you can do your part. You tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, you make sure people are informed. There's still some people I run into in really small communities in remote parts of British Columbia where they go, huh, Bud Light, huh? They just don't, don't know. And of course, I'm an ambassador for them to know. I get them up to speed. I tell them exactly what they need to know. And as a matter of fact, this might be one of my last videos for the next few days because as some of you may know, I am heading up to Alaska on a cruise and I am damn curious if they're selling Bud Light on the ship. They probably got a little bit, but I bet you the sales are gonna be down. I'm gonna report on that. I'm gonna check up on that. And even while I'm in port, whenever I am in Juneau, Alaska, I go to the uh, Red Dog Saloon, you know, the one with the, 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 the old uh, Western uh, little gates there on the front. I will be at the Red Dog Saloon and I will be talking to the, the guests and the proprietor there and finding out if they are selling Bud Light as much as they used to. And Alaska is a pretty conservative place, so I don't think they're doing the old wokester thing and supporting Bud Light anymore. So I'm looking forward to sniffing that little story out. And, you know, all the cruise and all the other stuff too, so you're going to be seeing a lot more cruise videos for quite a while on my channel. But I figured I had the time. I'm still prepping for the, the big uh, trip. I got a bunch of things I got to do. But I had the time today to upload this video, and I wanted to keep hitting that drum and making some noise and supporting the boycott. It's the least we can do. You put your comments down below and what's your thoughts on this story and why the story is growing. In the meantime, folks, stay safe, keep your wheels to the ground. I'll talk to you soon. Over and out. Thank you.